Saints practice number 14, we think. We start to lose track at a certain point. <laughs> We're inside the Superdome. It is the Friday before the preseason opener. Now, let's do a couple of injury updates first. Look, the one guy that I was concerned about was Rashid Shahid. I asked Dennis Allen. He said he is not concerned at all. He said he's not concerned at all about any of those injuries, meaning Shahid or Traquan Smith or Demario Davis. Those guys will be okay. That was a, an important update. And Landon Young, literally on what turned out to be the last play yes. today, Landon Young went down with what Dennis describes as he thinks a strained MCL. Mm -hmm. So even that appears to not be serious, although it's very early in that that evaluation could change. But it was still a lively practice inside the dome. Yeah, it was. And, and it, it's that kind of warm-up before the preseason. And we had the uh, we had our two-minute drills at the end of the uh, end of the uh, practice. That's when they were working with the situational uh, drills with that. And I thought two guys that stood out, and, and obviously it's guys that we've mentioned all throughout camp and the yeah. first is Chris Olave yeah. and, and not only did he make an impressive touchdown catch over Elante Taylor in the end zone to score in that red zone opportunity but also had a really good uh, uh, catch on a deep route and Derek Carr described it in, and it was one of these where he's like it's something that I don't see out of a second year wide receiver where he ran a certain way to kind of get away from Tyron Matthew who is of course an, obviously a vet in this league mm -hmm. but Derek didn't, was thinking hey I need to get the ball here and 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 Olave made the move while he was thinking it to, to complete that pass and and just they the, just did one of these they just kind did of one things. of these yeah. things was like hey you figure out where you need to go and, and, and do that and and I'm really excited to see what Chris Olave can do in the second season uh, because I think he's going to make strides and, and end up being maybe one of the one of the better wide receivers if not in the NFC in the NFL and you should be excited because this guy's been making plays all throughout camp and really if you're looking at your wide receiver options he's been number one clearly for yeah. the Saints. Oh yeah no he has been outstanding yeah it was a move at the top of the route mm -hmm. which is something Dennis Allen has talked about with him that was just terrific yeah and Ricardo mentioned Marshawn Lattimore and, and as stupid as this sounds Marshawn Lattimore has to me, been at a different level than even by Lattimore standards. You watch him in every play. He blankets no matter who it is, whether it's A.T. Perry or Chris Olave. Uh, Lattimore is in place where he's supposed to be every play. I asked Dennis Allen afterwards, is this the, is this the best we've seen Olave? I mean, best we've seen Lattimore. And he took a step back and he said, well, look, he's been an elite player for us for a long time, mm -hmm. but I do think this has been his best camp. Absolutely. Lattimore's been that good in camp that you could say it's his best camp, although he has been an elite player player in the league. Two other guys I want to mention that I thought had great days. Um, one was Alante Taylor, who was everywhere and made a bunch of plays. And then two was Keith Kirkwood, who was more in the seven on sevens. But Keith Kirkwood's mm -hmm. made plays every day. I think if you're looking at the number five receiver, I think he's maybe distinguished himself as that guy on this mm -hmm. team. He made a play, is a two on two drill, where he goes to the corner and Jameis Winston threw a high ball and he went up and he had no choice. Went up one-handed with the right hand mm -hmm. and snagged it out of the air. It, it was as good as any single catch in camp. I love Kirkwood on that one. And that was a heck of a play. Yeah, and, and this is going to be fascinating seeing these three preseason games. And this is where we're going to find out who these, like, backups are four or five receivers. You know, who's going to be the, the, the next guy back up in the defensive back they're going to carry. And, and, and just one observation just overall. There is a significant drop when you start with the one offense to the oh, two yeah. offense. Oh, yeah. And, like, it, when Derek Carr's in there and they're moving down the field, they're able to score touchdowns, be able to get field goals. But there is a considerable drop-off when you get to that second yeah. unit. And this is where we're going to find out, all right, can Jameis Winston hold on? Like, I, I think he can, but can he hold off a Jay Kaner? If Jay yeah. Kaner plays well in these preseason games, does he move past, you know, past Jameis Winston and probably end up being a backup? That's something you can look there. You mentioned Keith Kirkwood. You mentioned these other receivers. Who are those guys that are going to, you know, kind of take off? Because right now, when you're looking at the, the second offense and also the second defense, I think when you go for one to two on defense, I don't think there's a considerable drop off. But offensively I think there is when you get to the twos and threes and I think we're going to see with these preseason games some of these guys like you mentioned a Kirkwood or or or, or anybody else these running backs when you're, when you're looking through like there's going to be some guys that can win a job here yeah. that early on in camp you go all right where do you figure in this 53 or where do you figure in a practice squad but if they put some good performance out here including starting Sunday against the Chiefs then they're going to win themselves a roster spot. Yeah you pack a lot in there that, that I want to comment on okay first of all I think the deepest spots on the team are at the defensive line and in the second down. Yes. So I correct. do think when you go to twos and threes at those on spots, you're going to yeah. see some really good players. Right. Um, 
And look, I think there's two ways to watch preseason or two things to look for. One is you got to look and the starters are all going to play. Dennis Allen said, yes. said anybody who's healthy will play in this game. So I think there's two things to watch. One, you want to see how the starters are doing. And within that, you want to see how Derek Carr in this offense. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's what we all want to see. But even we want to see Trevor Penning. He, Dennis Allen said yesterday he's a mauler in the run game. That's not the problem. Watch Trevor Penning in pass protection. Mm -hmm. And and the, the give and take it takes to be <laughs> he's great when he when he can be aggressive. Yes. Can he be great in the passiveness of pass protection? He hasn't been yet. Dennis Allen said he's still working on it. So there are things to watch about the starters, but then yes, the preseason is also all about winning the bottom end of the mm -hmm. roster jobs. And look, you can think those aren't important, who the fifth receiver is or or who the ninth defensive lineman is mm -hmm. but I'll say this Juwan Johnson won one of those jobs a few years yes. ago where it didn't really matter for that season but look at what he's developed into mm -hmm. which is a legitimate NFL receiving threat what guys out of the this group can be your last DB your 51st 52nd mm -hmm. and 53rd man on the roster that maybe in two years can be real players for you and that's sort of the fun of the preseason we got a, we got a lot of guys and like that DB group has been really good and I'm talking yeah. seven eight nine deep right Ugo Amadi, I have loved. Number zero, you'll see yeah. him. Your guy, Troy Pride, 37. Troy has Pride has been great. Isaac Yadam, a guy that they picked up last season. These are guys, yeah. Watch they're, all of them. Yeah, they're so deep in that defensive back, and this is where they're going to get the opportunity to, like I said, win those jobs. And it, and right now, it doesn't, like, they're not your frontline starters. But again, these are guys who are going to contribute mm -hmm. on special teams when they're here. And injuries happen. So you're yeah. going to need somebody who can actually be, you know, take live bullets and play. And certainly, you get to see this early on in the preseason. That's why when, after the starters, go out and of course Dennis Allen wouldn't give us the plan of when they're no, going to pull no. those number one those ones but when you get to those second third fourth quarters when you're looking at these guys there are some guys that stand out if we keep mentioning these guys names in the preseason that certainly help, bodes well for them getting a hopefully getting a roster spot um, and, and keeping a job here or if it doesn't work out here it does a great tape for right. other teams that are looking for you know need a position needs uh, it, it certainly it does get important when you're looking at you know when we're looking at the second and third the number twos and number threes again I, I, I Everybody's going to be paying attention to the ones, but there's going to be a lot of great oh, and, that we're and going those to be jobs. Yeah, and those jobs are fun. Now, Derek Carr was asked how much you'll play. He said, "Quote: I need all the work I can get." So, how much that is? He said he wants to play. He said he'd love to play the whole game. That obviously won't happen. We'll see how much. But Carr will play. We'll see how much. Uh, one note. First wide receiver cut was number 16, Kiki Kuti, the former Houston Texan. He is out. The Saints released him today. <laughs> Diminishes that number a tiny bit. They've still got way too many wide receivers. And they made that move to sign Jalen Smith, the former Pro Bowl uh, linebacker for the Cowboys. Dan Silent said that Jalen Smith likely won't play because he just got into the building. And uh, the Saints today, need so he depth. Won't play Sunday. Right. And they, they, have, need that. they need the depth at linebacker. So, so we'll see that. Um, this is the final practice before that game. That game, of course, kicks off at noon Sunday. There are significant renovations in the Superdome, just like there are every year. Um, so fans will get a first chance to see that. And that is a look at preseason of training camp practice number 14 before preseason game number one. Ricardo LeCompte, Doug Mouton reporting from the Superdome.